They'll just call me saying that there's a roach in the room. Okay. Yeah. Ugly boy. He's looking at Oh the my god! <laughs> this is my life now. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy Rick. This is Deb. And this is LMC Talk. We'll talk about love, marriage, and of course, everything can be discussed. Over a great cup of everything? coffee, everything, everything, everything with AE. Okay. All right, listen, li listen, guys. Life right. update. Quick life update. Um, as you can see, we've been out for a little bit. It's the reason for that. All right, we actually moved. Okay, yes, we, we did. moved to a completely new city. Yes. So we're doing it all over again. We okay, did it all over again. Yes. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing, Nothing wrong. wrong with shaking it up, doing your own thing. That's right. So we're pretty proud of the move that we made. We made it for our daughter. Which is, you know, she's going to college now and we wanted to be closer to her. So we like, hey, we're going to pick all our stuff up. We're going to move it to a new city. And if we got to start over for our daughter, that's what we do. That's what we'll right? do. That's what we do. Is what it is. All right. You know this how we do, though. We got a new place afraid. and everything else. Yeah. Um, so we'll probably give you guys some updates about the place and show you a little bit about, you know, us redecorating and everything else. Even this spot right here right now. We you did it. just yeah, we literally just decorated this, this spot right here that we have in the house. So So Yeah. Since we're talking about the move, mm -hmm. go ahead and tell them about that one scenario that we had with um BB, that's our daughter B. Oh, oh no, oh, you're talking about the <laughs> with her dorm, right? Yeah. I think that right. So we, we like literally we just moved down here in, in a few days. Um, uh, BB was on in her um, in her dorm at her college, right? And she calls two o'clock in the morning, like just screaming. Like actually, it was one, one o'clock in the morning, right? Just kind of hysterically. She's like, hey, hey, hey. we're like, hey, what, what's going on? You know? All right, hold on. Okay, you ain't telling the story, right? All right, cool, go ahead. All right so oh, fine. So it is one thirty-one a.m. So Bianca call in my phone, her dad's phone. I'm out here, right? Middle of the night. They'll just call me saying that there's a roach in the room. And we've been on FaceTime for 30 minutes because there's an insect in her room and she cannot sleep and she wants out of the room. Alright. Got this date. So now I'm at uh, drive 20 minutes. Her dad is inside trying to kill whatever the insect is or roach or whatever she saw. To come kill the roach for her because she's uh, traumatized. That will not let her go into that room so we could get some peace. And now there's nobody else that's going to be here to actually do that for her right now because everybody's asleep because it's 1 o'clock in the morning. It's uh, actually, I think, 1.30 in the morning. So, yep, this is what I signed up for. I'm loving it. This is my life now. Yeah, ugly boy. He's looking at Oh, the my God. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, we got, I got him out eventually, but, yeah. you know, but that was just a, a quick experience. <laughs> that was a, that's, that's yeah. How, that is, so, that that is, that's how the move started. That is our life now, so. That's what it is. Anyway, okay, uh, we're gonna get back to business right now. We're gonna talk about the tidbit of today. So what's going on, man? Let's let's. All see. right. So because we were going through, um, before we even get to that, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're kind of semi empty nesters, and here's why I say semi because, like. Our son, he comes and he goes as he pleases, and my daughter is at her dorm. So um, there was a time when both of them weren't home for a little bit, and it felt so weird, y'all. It it's really like, weird. you know, we normally do our drive by ourselves. It's not like they're always with us, but it was just this empty feeling. Yeah. And we were looking at each other like, Wow, is this what it's gonna feel? Is like? this what it's gonna we're feel like? like? Totally so now it's I really, really have to like face him and deal with him and he has to face me and 
it brought us to brought me to the topic today and the topic is called silent divorce silent divorce okay all right i'll roll with it all right and the reason why i'm going that direction of silent divorce because it got us to thinking can empty nesting lead to a divorce because what if i don't know you right and we didn't spend time to kind of know each other mm -hmm. and um so now every so the kids are gone and now here we are looking at each other and that is we don't want to be together because we have nothing in common so with that being said can an emptiness lead to divorce what is an emptiness divorce according to the mayo clinic emptiness syndrome is a phenomenon in which parents experience feelings of grief loneliness sadness and loss and when that last child leaves home and unfortunately with emptiness syndrome divorce can result mm. really yes so they're basically saying like when you know all the kids leave and everything else um they're there could be a possibility that they won't last after that. So you're telling me, okay, you have one kid, you have two kids. Yeah. You, you, you've been with the kid and you guys have been together for at least 18 years, yeah. 21 years, whatever the case may be, right? Mm -hmm. And then after those years are done, you have nothing, um, I would say, in common anymore. Nothing. To focus on. So now you guys are falling apart because, of course that's interesting yes and i can see how that can happen as well you have, you have something else yes because it's saying the frictions that were under the surface when the children were in the home becomes too hard to handle and can lead to emptiness syndrome and divorce mm. so by the time the children leave parents may begin to change in other ways too mm. and if they're saying it's a emptiness syndrome that mm. means that it is a thing yeah. Meaning that there's probably a, a, a percentage of people that do not work out. Uh, funny you said percentage. Yeah. According to the Mayo Clinic, emptiness syndrome happens after the last child leaves home, which can result in divorce. One study from the University of Louisville at Kentucky suggests that the emptiness divorce rate has increased from 10 to 25 percent of marriages. There are mainly three reasons for this divorce rate. First is the loss of the sense of purpose and source of joy. Second mm. is the feeling of despair. And last are the problems that have been been brushed under the rug Eesh. Eesh. all right so all right, let's, let's start let's talk about it one by one what was the first one um three reasons the first is the loss of sense of purpose and source of joy that's one or two that's one that's one okay the source of joy and the sense of sense of purpose of purpose okay. right so now with the children out the house so if you don't have a sense of purpose outside of your children or your children is the only thing that brought you joy now that they're gone you have nothing mm. so you have to build a relationship outside of your children so you do have a sense of purpose yeah. and joy i know so much of our lives are so it's so engulfed yeah in it's kids. so engulfed in our children yeah, but if you do that then you realize that once the children are gone you literally don't know your spouse and um starting from scratch at that point is almost like null and void what do you think yeah yeah so it says it loses your sense of purpose so basically you could be doing a whole bunch of things because of your kids right so maybe let's say you you took a certain job because it paid a lot more you worked a lot more hours because of the kids because you wanted to make sure that you're you're getting ready for them to go to college you, that could be i've been the case it could be a number of different things but purpose though yeah it's not just a job it's like purpose for your your life so mm -hmm. now it's like and that doesn't even have to do with even the marriage i think mm -hmm. i think it's purpose for yourself as a as, as a husband or purpose for yourself as a wife and if i can't find my purpose because the only thing that we had in common is both of us focusing on the child mm -hmm. so now that the child is gone i don't have a sense of purpose of what do i want to do with my life because it's been 18 years and the child is gone and i have i wasn't thinking of anything that i wanted to do 
outside of that so your your main focus was on the kids the entire time so yeah so now it's like okay how do i switch my purpose to something else or maybe um refocus i would say because yeah. you're not going to take your purpose off your kids completely because of course you're still going to be thinking about them and mm -hmm. even though they're growing and outside. but is it still purpose at that point um well yeah i think it still is it, your kids are still going to be a part of you it doesn't matter what age they become okay they're still going to be considered your kids you know what I mean? In their in their twenties or thirties, right. it doesn't really matter. Because of course, you're changing your energy on the things that you're concentrating on, so that the purpose can change. Right. You know what I mean? So, so yeah. I mean, that's an interesting. What was the other one? That was the, the second is the feeling of despair. I felt the feeling mm. of despair. I felt I feel it, like you just missed them. No, right? yeah. It, like, I, why I, is happening? I really felt like you, 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 mm -hmm. you, you lost something, but you didn't really. Yeah. Right. So I felt that feeling of despair, but. The thing about building a relationship outside of your children is that we were kind of feeling the same thing at the same time. So we were able to discuss what we were feeling. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just a one-sided thing because I know at times you'd come and you'd be like, man, I really miss B. Mm -hmm. And the house feels weird without her, even though sometimes she's in her room, like most of the times, but it was just an empty feeling. So we would kind of share the burden of the feeling that we felt, you know, that despair that we felt. So it didn't feel like just a one-sided burden on me or just on you because we kind of shared it. So you kind of knew when I got quiet, you're like, you miss her, don't you? And I'm like, yeah. So that kind of made it feel a little better, but that is because we have built such a bond outside of our children, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm like, even with the bond that we've built outside of our children, it still felt so hard. So it just got me to thinking, if you didn't build anything outside of your children, what do you do at this point besides a divorce? Like, do, like, because, and it depends on the age that you have children, right? So if, if you're in your forties, your fifties, your sixties, are you gonna start over at 60, 50? Yeah. Now that the children are gone, like you have, like when you're talking about you have nothing in common with your spouse, the only thing that you had in common was this child and the child is now out. Now I have to face you, you're like a mirror. I have to face you, you have to face me and we're looking and I have nothing for you and you have nothing for me. The good thing about I think with even us though is that we were always communicative. So now now you gotta have to really focus on yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um or yeah. focus on each other. On each other. Yeah, yeah. Or focus focus on each other. Yeah, and right. and when when you have to focus on each other, all those things that you pushed under the rug all those years, yeah. You're gonna have to face them now. Yeah. You know? So now what do you do now? You're you're walking around a house um, And that's the last one. It said problems have been brushed under the rug. Yeah, so now you're walking around the house and you're all silent because every time you guys had an argument about something, um, you would probably use the kids as an excuse. Like, okay, are we going to go pick up the kids together or are we going to do this with the kids? Yeah. And kind of like, you know. The kids are always the buffer. The kids yeah, are like a buffer. Yeah. Try to ricochet yeah. the, the, the thoughts and, and, and the pattern that you had um, and, and redirect it into where, what the kids were doing. Right. Um, so, that, so that your, your spouse... You know, you're kind of doing this subconsciously, um, kind of, kind of um, leading your spouse in a in a direction where they have to accept what you're talking about because you're you're leading with the kids. So now, now instead of you know taking care of the issue that at hand, you're saying, okay, well, the kids is this and kids is that because you know that your your mate is gonna respond to you saying starting a sentence with the kids the kids, yeah, the kids yeah yeah that that will get their yeah, attention quicker the, than anything exactly. else and if they don't then it's gonna be a big okay you know these are the kids we're talking about right it's not me and you we're talking about the kids so yeah yeah so that's interesting and um i had wrote something because i thought about it and it and it was just i was thinking to myself what's the purpose in spending years with your spouse to not build a friendship yeah the children go you may move and you're left with an underdeveloped relationship. Mm. You are set in your ways because, you know, as you get older, you get set in your ways. So you're yes. set in your ways. Bad habits have never been addressed. And what do you do at this point? So then this came to me, right? So we invest in our jobs because you expect a 401k. Yeah. You invest in your church mm. because you want to build spiritual relationships. Yeah. You invest in your credit so you can build a good life and a good home, right? And some may invest in their health to have a long life, mm -hmm. but you don't invest in your marriage. That's the yeah. one thing that people don't invest in is their marriage. They'll invest in everything else and make mm -hmm. that better besides their marriage. 
So now you're rich, you're buff, <laughs> godly, and you don't have a wife or a husband. <laughs> and you work on everything else. So now, so now you got you you finally got it together. You finally got everything together. And the kids leave, and then you're like, oh, yeah. what happened? It's an underdeveloped relationship. So now it's, it's, just, it's just like anything else that you um anything else that you want you want your life to be better we, you do everything else but for some reason with our spouse we just tend to think that the relationship will take care of itself mm -hmm. i'm here you're here so it'll grow but why do you go to the gym every day why do you go to church on sunday why do you go to church on wednesday you know you know what i'm saying why do you put money into your 401k every week or every two weeks you gotta build you gotta why do you get life insurance you gotta reap you know, you got to sow what you want to reap right, later on. Right. So if you're not sowing any, you know, good, good um, seed early in the relationship, all through the relationship for 18 to 21 years or right, whatever it is right. where the kids are available there to you. Yeah. Um, you got to find some time, even though the kids are there and, and they seem to be the ultimate focus. But you have to be, your relationship has to be the number one focus. The number one focus. And 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 we tend to think that like like date nights and anything that you do that's lux it's luxury to your marriage date night is not luxury and uh, you know what a lot of people get this wrong because some people think oh man i feel like i'm i'm cheating the kids for mm -hmm. for not i i, I did for a I didn't buy, or a getaway or whatever i didn't buy um my, my son's yeezys for him to go to school or his mm -hmm. nikes to go to school but now i'm here wanting to go out and wouldn't no, you can't feel guilty about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you've worked all your, all your life and you're trying to still prepare yourself for them not to be there later on anyway. Right. So you got you to gotta figure out a way to, to make sure that you're, you prioritize things properly. Right. And I'm telling you, like, it can get really real because even with us, like, after Bianca and I would say that we are... We are semi empty nesters, as I said earlier, mm -hmm. but I but we don't have a child that we're taking care of on a day to day basis. So it's like we I really get to see now, like, OK, babe, what are we going to what 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 do we have planned? Yeah. OK, what do, what does our short ter term goal look like? What, what does our next five, five years? Yeah, yeah. What does five years look like to us what does 10 years look like to us now that the kids are no longer involved and they're thinking about their own things now what does that look like to us do i even like you anymore yeah. do you it's not even love at this point do i even like you yeah do you like me you gotta like the person too. you really gotta like yeah. the person do you like me um did we build a solid enough foundation now to last mm -hmm. that now that we are at this 18 year mark did we build a solid enough foundation oh. that we, that could that could take us to till death yeah, because all of a sudden we turn, uh, kids leave and we turn into roommates. Where well, I can literally sleep upstairs and you can sleep downstairs and we don't really care because the kids are not here. We're doing whatever we feel like. All of a sudden the, the habit starts changing. And you know what I mean? And then when you have even bad habits with the kids being there, the same bad habit is going to be there too. It's probably going to be Magnified. Worse. Or yeah, it's it, just more it's magnified. Really magnified. Yeah, it's it's more magnified. magnified. And, and, and we have to take a step back and not look at you taking care your husband taking care of your wife as a bad thing or a soft thing like your husband making sure that the wife is good in the marriage and the wife making sure that the husband good is a smart thing if you want your marriage to work if you want your marriage to last that's the that's really the smart thing to do yeah always i mean that's that's the whole premise of you getting married to make sure you're taking care of each other um and even when the kids come and they go they leave eventually you have to find a way to keep that keep that mesh yeah you keep do that, that circle going you remember they always talk about um when uh uh, when you get married, you know, go to the counseling and the, the, the you know, the pastor will talk about the rings and what they're, they signify, signify and yeah. how to talk about the circle and yeah. it comes in one circle mm -hmm. and this is how you're supposed to be in one circle mm -hmm. to come back around. Mm -hmm. So it basically it feels like the light when you have the kids, you're going in the circle and then once, um, because you meet, you meet sometimes without the kids, of course, of right, course. Right. and then you come back around and then once the kids are gone, it's like the circle completes itself and then you feel like you're back to the beginning of when you guys just met again. 
crazy that's crazy right yeah it's true because it's like you're like i'm i'm really just seeing ooh, you. for you i didn't all of a sudden you'd be like i didn't notice that you brush your teeth like that in the morning mm -hmm. <laughs> it's true because we always rushing out rushing door, out. you know we gotta realize, pick, drop drop yeah. to school. we gotta drop k to school we you gotta, realize this, we gotta do that things. so you're realizing all these little yeah. things all these little nuances you know and and it's it, it can get <laughs> listen it can get real hectic and i'm telling from a perspective of us being friends yeah. and it still feels like a little off-putting it's like i'm having to readjust my mind i'm having to readjust everything in order to and i see everything now like when yeah, i'm looking exactly. at it, i see I everything that's like magnified, magnified. Right? so i'm like wow so it's just us huh so we gone what are we and, gonna do the good, the, there's good and bad about it because you can magnify a, a whole bunch of bad things you start seeing all kinds of stuff in yeah it. but you can also magnify a whole bunch of good things too yeah you probably one day just look, look at your mate and be like wow i didn't I, i'm realizing that my my wife really loves me now i'm really seeing it mm -hmm. because the, the, the noise and the confusion is not around with the kids and the distractions man this person really loves me this person really looking out for me yeah. this person is really going hard for me and you probably didn't even realize it because of all the, the noise that yeah. you, the kids were in between you know that's what I mean? true and i it's had here also bad. yeah mm -hmm. how long people are married says nothing about the health of the marriage yeah. people yeah. who can't stand to be in the same room spend decades together some live double lives some couples haven't had a real conversation in 25 years Jeez. don't idealize longevity idealize relationships where you see mutual respect mm. admiration and underneath it all a true friendship mm, to see everything's coming back to the friendship everything comes back to the friendship it does not matter the years of marriage that does not determine the health of a marriage mm -hmm. because some people have different agendas on not leaving a marriage and that has nothing to do with love oh that's good that is true you know Cause, cause <laughs> if some people just want to you know show that they can they could get married they can get married and they want to show that they can stay married and see exactly you, you know show face and that's you, it yeah but that has nothing to, has nothing to, to do, do with the friendship that you you find in right. the person you know the tolerance that you <laughs> because you i mean if you're years. not living with a person on a day-to-day -day basis they could literally be in the house and they pass each other all day every day but they know how to put on a good front once they when get they out get the out. house yeah. you know what i'm saying i mean you're only hurting yourself and and that doesn't make sense to me though because i'm like if i'm gonna or if i'm gonna put on a front why not just work on it for real why not just work on it you know what i mean so it's just the work behind it and where, where you put your energy and again whenever people ask us oh what's the secret to your marriage friends yeah, it's really friends. that simple because talk about everything okay when you think about when you say i'm gonna call my friend yep so that's the core of it all it's just a friendship and if you're gonna be with your partner might as well work on having a a relationship because you married them hopefully for some reason you know some good reason so it's like to me it you don't want to be in a silent divorce is where we started yeah so because a si problem. yeah silent divorce is that you can be in a house and y'all stay married but y'all don't talk y'all don't communicate y'all have no bond y'all don't have anything but paying the bills together mm. and that's it that's it y'all probably don't even sleep in the same room that's a silent divorce and sometimes even you could sleep sleep in the same bed and because both of us can be in the same house and we're living two separate lives mentally so you could even sleep in the same bed it doesn't even matter you don't have to even separate rooms you could be in the same bed mm -hmm. and still be separated so this brought up that topic of being a you know empty nester is are y'all working on your marriage because one day as long as you have kids this day is gonna come <laughs> they're gonna grow up so like yeah. whether your kids are four 14 yeah. this day is gonna come and hopefully you want to look at your spouse and see that you guys have something in common and that you guys have something that you can build on of course relationship it doesn't stop after the kids leave but it has to be something that you guys can build on after your child leaves so tell you that's work that's, on that that's kind of the moral of the story right so so we had the moral of the story now basically my moral is the same as yours basically that you got to work on your relationship while 
the kids are there. Yeah. Um, somehow, through, through the clutter, you're going to have to do it. You're going to have to point, do it. You're going to have to put your relationship in the forefront at all times and make sure that the kids are be taking, being taken care of. And that's one of the things I know about me and my wife is that if we don't agree, agree, don't agree, don't agree on everything, we agree on what we're supposed to be doing with the kids. If we if we focus more on our relationship while the kids are around, then this I'm will not this be can happen. Like it you, can happen. You, Both of them can be happening yeah, at, the same, at the same time. You keep your friendship with your friend. Um, of course, you're discussing things with your friend, with your kids, with the kids, and about the kids and their future. But you also discussing your future. You know everything that comes along with that. Which you getting older or getting you know five or ten years down the line. So you, you got to keep it. So what do you think um, the, the moral of the story is as well? Well, I kind of said it before. The moral of the story is to me that you have to build a strong foundation mm -hmm. with your spouse. Mm -hmm. It's spouse first. Good, good. It's spouse first, then children. So if you build a strong foundation with your spouse, then it will make it a lot easier. I'm not saying it's going to be a breeze when they leave, but it will make it a lot easier for you guys to see a future together. Yeah. because you've built a foundation or you've been building a foundation before and if you're building a foundation before that's going to include conversations it's going to include hard hard um talks it's going to include compromise it's going to include date nights it's going to include trips um you know it's going to include little gifts it's going to include watching tv together having a movie that or a series that y'all enjoy watching together bond over something bond over something it, it has to other be than something just the kids. other than just the kids so it, it it's going to be a plethora of things that leads up to that point and it has to be intentional because reason why it has to be intentional because life keeps life in right so if the kids and the jobs and everything and you feel tired so you have to be intentional about okay we got to work on this and i hope um we are helping you guys that have younger kids because i promise you it's coming yeah. and it's not it's cute. so fast bro and it's not cute it's yeah. it, it's it's a they it's a feeling of despair and you feel so sad and yeah. if you don't like your husband at that point or you your my husband doesn't like me at that point you're in big trouble yeah for real all right, so um, I think we kind of uh, exhausted the uh, topic, so that's really good. I like the topic. What's the name of the topic again? Uh, silent divorce. Silent divorce. That, okay. Are you in a silent divorce? Are we in a silent divorce? Mm, no, no. I guess. I don't know if I like you no more since the kids have been gone, <laughs> but that's all good. You know what I mean? Look at your ears look bigger since Bianca left. My ears have been my ears been the same size, bro. You see, it looks magnified now. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so that, listen, man. Thank you so much for joining us again. This is uh, LMC Talk. Hey, listen. Um, if you guys have just been here for the first time, just go like, you know, subscribe. Welcome. And yeah, if, if this is your first time, welcome. welcome. And, and, and welcome. Come back. Come come back. All right. All right. And uh, smash the notification button. Now make sure that you follow us and know when we have got a new video going. Usually we're gonna try to do this every week or so, or every two weeks. So that every week out for it. We're gonna try to do oh, it every week. Okay, another thing guys. Mm -hmm. All right, transparent moment is that we are trying to be more intentional about Love Marriage Coffee as well. So we wanna drop a video every week. So if you watch the video to the end, keep us accountable because it's important marriage is important yeah, send us a message saying hey where the video video at you're where the video at work on your relationship now that the kids are young i'm i'm i'm, I'm giving y'all game game i'm giving y'all game work on the relationship unless you want to have a divorce or a silent marriage you choose there it is so that's it for us this week thank you so much again for joining us <laughs> again my name is rick and this is dad okay this is just weird all right this is LMC Talk, and we'll see you next time. Love y'all. Yeah, ugly boy. He's looking at the Oh camera. my god! <laughs>